topic number three money out expenses and purchases so we're, we're going to be talking about the expense settings accounts payable transactions banks credit cards uh bill payments and vendors and expense center so if i go to the gear menu on the top right gear item gear icon and then i click on expenses on the left side i'm going to see all my expense related settings so things like making expenses billable like if i wanted to make some expenses billable because i want my client to pay that expense back or reimburse it that's the type of setting that you would see in here you would put stuff like do we do do we charge sales tax you know what are the default payment terms do i want to have purchase orders yes and no do i want to see items in purchase transactions or only see accounts okay also do i want to do job costing which is track expenses and items by customers that would also be something that you only see through the expenses settings in the accountant and settings uh, menu so just like a customer center there is a vendor center and the vendor center will have all your expense transactions grouped by customer in the money bar notice how i can click on purchase orders open bills and open um, I mean last bills paid you can also sort of group them by that category by clicking on any of those options in the money bar in the top but for the for the most part you're gonna see them all organized by vendor okay if you click on the in the left accountant toolbar if you click on the transactions button and then you click on expenses then you're gonna see this expense transactions um, not grouped by vendor but all dumped in there, right? And I can use a filter to only show bills or credit cards. But what's really nice about this screen is that I can um, recategorize things on the spot from here. Now, some accountants freak out about that because they think their clients are gonna mess things up. So you can actually click on that little baby gear, the small gear in the bottom, uh, or, or sort of in the middle to the right, and you can disable that account um, uh, column if you don't wanna be tempted to change those. Um, accounts there okay now the most uh, typical uh, vendor transactions are going to be a purchase order which again it's, it's, it should be a precursor of um, a precursor of a bill okay and, um, and, and a purchase order is a non posting transaction so make sure you keep that in mind purchase orders are non posting transactions okay then we have bills you can create a bill from scratch or you can create a bill that was originally converted from a purchase order. A bill will affect my accounting. It is a posting transaction. A bill is basically accounts payable. Now, remember, as I mentioned earlier, with the different QuickBooks versions for your test, you do not have access to bills on the QuickBooks Online Simple Start Edition. You only have access to bills in Essentials and uh, in uh, Plus. Now, the bill payment is the transaction that we use to take money out of the bank and into paying off that bill. So the bill payment is what a customer payment is to an invoice, a bill payment is to a bill. So the bill payment is the other side of the transaction in which we mark the bill paid. Now a vendor credit is just like a customer credit memo. We create a vendor credit to reduce that accounts payable so we don't have to pay that accounts payable. Somebody's asking, can I give the client access to do purchase orders? Good question, Joy. No, there, there is no way to create a user that only strictly can do purchase orders. So you couldn't give your client access to do a purchase order. But there are third party apps. There's an app out there called Cricket. I think it's C-R-I-K-I-T, Cricket, that can create portals to give this specific access to specific users. Um, and that could be a, a solution for you. But no, I cannot create a user that can only access PO so my clients can do purchase orders. That, that would be nice though. Good, good suggestion. Make sure you click on the, the little help button next to the gear button and click on feedback and give that type of feedback if you have many clients asking for that feature. Now, a check and an expense. These are two transactions used to take money out of your bank or out of, out of a credit card um, to go straight to an expense account. So we don't use checks or expenses to pay bills. 
to pay bills, we have to use bill payment. We absolutely have to use bill payment. We cannot pay bills or open bills that are in QuickBooks with an expense or a check transaction. A bill payment, as I mentioned earlier, a bill payment could come from the bank, so it could essentially be a check. And a bill payment could come from a credit card, so it could also be a credit card charge, but it has to be done in that way. You create the bill, then the bill payment, that way that bill doesn't stay open forever. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is they'll create a bill and then they'll write a check to pay off that bill and that bill stays open forever. So the check, difference between a check and an expense is that a check is restricted to be written from a bank account and an expense can be, can be written from a bank account or from a credit card. Um, but a, an expense and, and a check coming from the bank account are essentially the same thing. It's the, it's the transaction that we use to take money from the bank and spend it into some sort of expense. Okay, so that's uh, the money out transactions. Let's talk about the other transactions. We have deposits, transfers, journal entries, timesheets, and statements. So deposits, if I have an invoice and I receive that payment, when I receive the payment, I have the choice to take that money straight into the bank, which means I don't need I don't need an additional transaction called a deposit, or I can move the money into undeposited funds. Undeposited funds is that category that's called a limbo, where all my customer payments go into before I make a bank deposit. And if you usually deposit more than one check at a time, more than one customer payment at a time, then it's gonna be worth it for you to receive the payments into undeposited funds and then do one more step, which is deposits. That way your bank deposits uh, match QuickBooks. If you have two, three, four customer checks in the deposit, you wanna bundle them together so they go straight into QuickBooks the same way that they went into the bank. So a deposit can have three purposes, uh, actually two purposes. One, it can be used to bundle multiple customer payments and put them into the bank. Or also in the bottom, it could also be used to put uh, information straight into the register um, that's about income or expenses. However, you never want to put income transactions into um, the, the account portion in the bottom of the deposit. You never want to put anything there if there's an invoice outstanding because that invoice will stay open forever. But if you don't run any invoices, then all your deposits can, can go to an income account. Okay. But some people have a combination where, you know, half the stuff they sell through invoice, the other half are services that they never invoice and that goes straight to the bank. That's fine. Just make sure you identify them correctly and you don't, by mistake, put a, a, a deposit of income in the bank that's not related to a payment or an invoice that it didn't follow the proper workflow. Now, transfers are used to take money from one balance sheet account to another balance sheet account. So that could be bank to bank. It could be bank to credit card. It could be loan to bank account. A transfer is actually uh, pretty much to move a monetary value from one account to the other. You could, yes, you could do journal entries. Some people, somebody's asking here, could I not just do a journal entry to do a transfer? The answer is yes, you could do a journal entry, but remember QuickBooks is not just designed for accountants. It's also designed for end users. So for a lot of times, a transfer is a lot easier to understand um, than a journal entry for, especially for an end user. Now a journal entry, straightforward, is for you to select the accounts that you're gonna debit and the accounts that you're gonna credit so you can make adjustments to any of your accounts through journal entries. One thing that's very particular is worth uh, annotating, write this down, especially for the exam, is um, for QuickBooks desktop users, journal entries, we were limited to maximum one account receivable or one account payable account. In, Quick, in the QuickBooks desktop world, when you do a journal entry, you couldn't have more than one accounts receivable account, or you couldn't have accounts receivable and accounts payable in the journal entry. Just the way QuickBooks desktop is designed, it doesn't work well that way. In QuickBooks Online, there's no limitations. So one thing that QuickBooks Online does very different than QuickBooks Desktop is it allows you to have multiple AR or multiple AP accounts in a journal entry. So you should write that down. 
Now, a timesheet, as I mentioned, is a non-posting transaction. It's for us to keep track of time of our employees or contractors that are being spent, uh, spent in a particular job, or maybe just for us to know how many hours a person worked. A timesheet can work can 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 have two purposes. One purpose could be strictly for creating a payroll check afterwards, and then the other purpose could be to create billable time for our customers. Right, so that's the purpose of a timesheet. Until the timesheet is converted to a billable invoice or converted to a payroll, timesheets are still considered non-posting transactions. And you can create a statement, and a statement basically it's a it's a it's a it's a form that contains all my invoices and all my payments in a single screen. Uh, a statement is not really a transaction; it's just a presentation of multiple.